Clemson. And South Carolina. A game filled with big catches and memorable moments. Who could forget the first time Clemson showed up in orange britches? While South Carolina fans will never forget beating their rival five straight times. Of course, Clemson fans say what's better than five? Try six in a row. But there's one thing both teams fans can agree on. After not getting to play this game last year, it's great to have it back. It's the Gamecocks and the Tigers on SEC Network now. Welcome to SEC Saturday Night, presented by T-Mobile. This is the state championship of South Carolina with the 8-3 set Clemson Tigers and the 6-5 South Carolina Gamecocks. Welcome to a raucous williams Bryce Stadium with my guy Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang on the field. I'm Taylor Zarzer. You ready for this? I am, buddy. Well, it seems like a fair fight this year, given the way the Gamecocks are playing currently and all the adversity that Clemson has faced this season. Stinch losing a national championship game, that's not adversity, which Clemson has experienced in the last decade. Losing three games, though, in the same season is. Somewhat unprecedented under Dabo Swinney, but is it that surprising? Given the amount of transition that they've endured offensively, you don't lose a Trevor Lawrence or a Travis Etienne and just plug and play, but then you also look at the injuries, the attrition that they've experienced as the season has unfolded, especially at wide receiver a position group that they were counting on and yet last week we saw the running game begin to emerge and Kobe Pace along with Will Shipley got after Wake Forest on the ground 54 carries 333 rushing yards for the Clemson offense they paced things for the Tigers on that side of the ball took some of the pressure off of the quarterback position and the passing game the much maligned wide receiver core as well and the defense this season it's been as expected. Now, there's not as many stars, perhaps, but the productivity has been there, and they had Wake Forest on their heels from the get-go. This is one of the most aggressive units that you will find in all of college football. That will be on display again here tonight. Should be a lot of fun. We'll see how South Carolina handles the Clemson defense. Yeah, Jason Brown, the quarterback for the Gamecocks, has never seen anything like this. But, boy, has he looked good as he's become the starting quarterback for the Gamecocks in the last three weeks. Forced into service, and yet when he stepped in in his first start versus Florida, set the tone and the expectations, continued to build on the momentum that he was able to establish. Last week in that big win over Auburn, he's been very very efficient, found ways to extend plays, and as a passer, Marcus Satterfield said, as a play caller, this guy just finds ways to make completions. It's allowed them to maintain possessions, extend drives, and get into scoring position. Look at this place. Here come the Gamecocks. Played their best football at home. Winning five of their six games at williams Bryce, But they haven't seen it like this in a long time. And you hear the crowd react to the arch rivals, the Clemson Tigers. They've dominated this rivalry through the years. That man, Dabo Sweeney, has a chance to become the first coach ever in the series to win seven in a row tonight. How is his team going to handle all of the noise in this facility tonight? That's a big question as he plays for the state championship. There are no other championships to play for, but there's a big one on the line tonight. And for more on that, we go to the field in Alyssa Lane. Yeah, guys, for the first time since 2014, Clemson will not be in Charlotte for the ACC championship game. But as you said, another championship on the line, the Palmetto Bowl. It's on the list of bowls they have every single season. Now nine out of the, the 11 starters on this Clemson offense are freshmen or sophomores who have never experienced this rivalry before. As you said, part of the preparation, getting ready for the
the noise. Sandstorm will be blaring here in williams Bryce Stadium all night long. So it was in Death Valley for Clemson's practice all week long. So much so, Dabo Sweeney said they blew out a speaker. They were playing it so loud during practice, knowing they're going to face an aggressive crowd tonight. A very hungry opponent as no one on the South Carolina roster has ever beaten the Clemson Tigers. Looking to get back on the winning side of this rivalry tonight. Listen to what they're doing behind Alyssa. Let's turn it up. This guy, though, had a season-high 543 yards of total offense that he led the team to against the Deeks last week. They'll have to deal with williams Bryce, the defense, and all the fans tonight. Throwing on the first play. Too high for Bo Collins. Last week, Clemson got going on the ground. And part of the reason why that was so important was because they've had difficulty in that passing game. And it's not just because of the new faces at receiver. They've had accuracy issues as well from their quarterback and Rui Ungola. Shipley skips a tackle. He's got a first down out near the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 12 for the true freshman from Weddington, North Carolina. We have seen upsets already today. I know the Gamecocks would like to pull this one off against Clemson tonight, Stench. Well, if they're going to do that, and Jabari Ellis, number 99, if you got a chance for a tackle for loss, you have to make it. Instead, Shipley runs right through it. Completion goes to Collins and Bo. He has a first down run. Shipley and Collins together became the ev first ever Clemson true freshman tailback wide receiver tandem to go over 100 yards receiving and rushing in the same game. Did that last week against Wake Forest. It could have come at a better time. Obviously, Bo Collins beginning to emerge at wide receiver because of all the injuries. They were down to seven scholarship wide receivers out of the lineup. Shipley on the toss, nothing doing. Aaron Sterling and others there for the tackle. With Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang, I'm Taylor Zarser. Realize a lot of you just watched a wild one in Auburn, Alabama, where the Tide won in quadruple overtime against the Auburn Tigers. Earlier today, Jim Harbaugh in Michigan finally beat the Buckeyes. That man, Shane Beamer, 
knows all about rivalries, growing up playing in the Virginia Tech, Virginia one, and coaching in this one and several others before becoming the head coach this season. Leungalale throws to Collins, and he's crushed by Darius Rush. Loss of one. Kind of went right back to it. Got a nice block on the edge earlier. It's like the extended handoff, an easy pitch and catch. But instead, Rush does a great job fighting right through the block. And they get that negative yardage play. They missed on it earlier to force this third and 10 plus. Now can the Clemson pass protection hold up? They've been leaving six guys in to help ensure that we give Uyunglele a clean pocket to work from. DJ takes off. And he's got a first down. Stays on his feet inside the 30. He only has 271 yards of rushing this season. In the last few weeks, he's been banged up. The knee looked good there for 22. And he did a great job. Very opportunistic that time. They brought Damani Staley on a blitz. Clemson had six in the protection. But Uwe Uncle said, look, I've got a rush lane to the left. He took advantage of it. As you mentioned, a little bit nicked up on that right knee. But looked pretty mobile enough on that run. Inside the Gamecock 30. And off with a big hole for Shipley. Shipley's loose. Touchdown, Tigers. This is zone play. We did a nice job of pressing the line of scrimmage, attacking that line of scrimmage, and then bending it right back. Right behind the block of Hunter Rayburn there at left guard, Mason Trotter at center, and showing some of that speed to run away from the bounce of that Gamecock defense. The extra point by Potter is good. This Clemson offense has been maligned all year. They have scored on their last six drives going back to last week. Tigers on top first. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G, America's largest, fastest, and most reliable 5G network. It is senior night tonight for the Gamecocks. Spencer Eason Riddle, Jabari Ellis. He's had a terrific career, his sixth year of college football. Just one of the Gamecocks saluted on senior night tonight. Tigers strike first and quiet this Gamecock crowd. South Carolina gets the ball at the 25-yard line. Stitch told you about Jason Brown in the open, the senior from Fredericksburg, Virginia, that has started the last three games, joined the program in the spring as the third team quarterback. This guy set a Northeast Conference record with 28 touchdown passes two years ago for St. Francis College. Stinch, he looks like he's basically playing at the same level he was two years ago. No nerves the first three games. He's been incredibly poised. Just kind of plugged right into this offense, the third different quarterback they've had. And Zaquandre White, who got going against Auburn last week, gets to. What have you seen from Brown in the last month, Alyssa? Yeah, guys, I think one of the things that stands out about Jason Brown is his poise and his confidence, but when you come into a rivalry like this one, you don't quite know what to expect. I talked to Brown this week. He said, you know, last year, I was playing in front of a crowd of 3,000 people. Now it's 80 plus in one of the biggest games in college football. He said this week he leaned on former Gamecock quarterback Connor Shaw about exactly what he needs to do to make sure he keeps a cool head throughout this one. Connor said, hey, don't get overwhelmed. They're going to do a lot of different things on defense. Trust your training. It's a great guy to talk to. Shaw, a legend in these parts. There's is, is a flag on the field. Tonight's referee, Illegal Jerry Magdalenas. Offense. 12 players were on the field. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And we talk about that missed tackle for loss on defense, and now you get an error like that. You see Shane Beamer, he recognizes, look, 
They're all matched in this game. Clemson's not having the season that they typically had, and yet they know that they have to play a clean game. So you pick up a couple of yards, a couple of positive yards on that first down run, and instead it gets negated with a substitution infraction, and now you're behind the sticks on your second play of the game. White leaves the backfield. Brown steps up and goes down. K.J. Henry grabs him. Third, it'll be second, it'll be third and long. Last week, Clemson came out, guns blazing. Clemson attacking the backfield. On the second down play, they only rushed three. And still, Brown, who ends up having to tuck and press up in that pocket, that's the 15th sack by this Clemson defense the last nine quarters of play. Just crazy numbers for Brent Venable's squad. On third and 13, Brown's in trouble. Gets out of there, throws, and it's over the head of White. It's three and out for South Carolina. As Miles Murphy applied the pressure there, fourth down. And this is what they do to put this offensive line in a blender. You mug up linebackers, walk them up into the line of scrimmage, and then twist with the down lineman. That time, Miles Murphy came clean on the inside. Kind of a retooled left side of that front. Looked like Brent Venables wanted to catch that. Get his own interception because he was... No eligibility there, Coach. Timeout, South Carolina. Their first timeout of the half. Boy, Shane Beamer's team seems discombobulated since giving up the third down on defense. Already down a score and punting to Clemson. Tuesday night, freshman phenom Kennedy Chandler and number 15 Tennessee host Presbyterian. It's right here on the SEC Network in the ESPN F1 app. One tap. 7-0 South Carolina trailing Clemson. Early in the game, head coach Shane Beamer in his first season, 44-year-old, 6-5 and five record. He knew there'd be some ups and downs this year, but they can still have a winning season. They can beat their in-state rival, and they are going to a bowl game. He's checked a lot of boxes. Some wondered if they were realistic coming into the year. Well, it was a rocky start to the season, there's no doubt. A lot of comfort behind victories, five of their six wins, where they had to climb back atop the scoreboard after digging early holes. Kai Kroger, one of the best in the SEC. Fair catch by Will Brown back near the 37-yard line. It is a 40-yard punt as Dabo Sweeney's Clemson Tigers come back onto the field. Beating your in-state rival is more challenging than ever given what this guy has done. He has changed the bar, set the bar to a totally new standard, two national championships, four trips to the game. The streak of six straight college football berths, like Alyssa said, is over. The trips to Charlotte are over. Won't go to the ACC championship, but still can win 10 games. They win tonight and win their bowl game. That would be an 11th straight year they've done that. We end the lay to Shipley, who had the touchdown run. He's up to the 45. Yeah, one of the five goals that Debo Sweeney said that they have at Clemson beat South Carolina. And you consider the type of run that they have been on, the high accomplishment, to say the least, six straight college football playoff berths. And yet among those goals, it's a pretty short list at five, is to beat their opponent here tonight in South Carolina. Here's Shipley trying to shake out the cobwebs, it looks like. Some of that turf hung up in his face mask, it looked like. He's had a heck of a start with 51 yards rushing. Leonlele throwing the deep ball, one-on-one -on -one down there, and it's picked off. That's Cam Smith. That's an interception for Smith in three of his last four games. What a ton of pressure. Pocket held up relatively well for Leonlele. He's looking downfield. Cam Smith was underneath this throw. It was as if he ended up being the intended receiver. Defensively, what South Carolina wanted to do was make Clemson throw. This time, Clemson electing to throw it because they want to. An ill-advised throw, trying to get it to Bo Collins. Cam Smith makes the acrobatic interception and further pads those takeaway stats 
The Clayton White's defense have amassed so far this season. 15th pick of the year. Jason Brown hands to Kevin Harris, and Harris looked like the Tiger just about grabbed him by the helmet. Trenton Simpson's the guy with the tackle. Harris led the SEC in rushing over 1,100 yards last season, just 465 this year. He's battled injuries, his ankle, his back through the year. So a few to get up to the 19-yard line. Look at what the Gamecocks have done, forcing 24 turnovers. The problem is they've created, they've given up 22. 15 interceptions on the season. Harris out, White back in. Brown throws and is dropped by White out of the backfield. Last week, DeQuandre White was huge as a receiver out of the backfield. A couple of big plays, including a score. Second leading receiver in the game a week ago, 16 catches on the year. And considering that they've got a guy in Josh Van out wide, might be a little bit slow. Said that he might have injured his hamstring a little bit in practice on Tuesday. White might have an even more prominent role in the passing game tonight. Yeah, let's watch number six here on a third and eight out to the top of your screen. He's typically the guy Brown looks for. Looks that way, but throws underneath instead. It's the big tight end, Bell. He gets his Bell run. Losing yardage, James Skowski and friends with the tackle. It's fourth down. What a shot by the true freshman safety, Andrew McCuba. Comes up and brings the wood to Jaheim Bell. This is a guy that wanted to get more touches. Look at McCuba, just turns him away. Didn't wrap him up but slowed him just enough. He bounced back another four yards. Another three and out for the Gamecock offense, and that Clemson defense is wired in early. Just four total yards on two possessions for the Gamecocks, and Kroger is standing at his goal line. Gets it off, but it's off the side of his foot, and it goes out of bounds near the 40-yard line. That is a 26-yard punt. Let's take a look at our hometown connection brought to you by T-Mobile, where each week we highlight a player's connection to towns across the SEC. We saw him being greeted on the field earlier, Jabari Ellis, the senior from Vance, South Carolina. He's had an outstanding career. Seven tackles for loss, two fumble recoveries. The population over there near Lake Marion is 153. You know all of them are watching the pride of Vance, South Carolina tonight, Jabari Ellis. See if he can do something to DJ Uwe Ungalale and the Clemson Tigers. DJ threw the interception the last time he had the football. He's got Kobe Pace in the backfield, and Kobe doesn't get much. Running right at Ellis for one. We're talking with defensive coordinator Clayton White. So what is it that you're looking for? What are they doing on the ground? He said, we've seen a lot of counter. We've seen a little bit of toss. We've now seen both. They had the touchdown run on a zone scheme. This time, Jabari Ellis, pride of Vance, South Carolina, coming up with a big tackle there. Played the counter well, held the point, sheds the block, and makes the play. Second and eight inside the Gamecocks 40. Pace again. He falls forward inside the 34 as Cam Smith helped make the tackle. Stench was telling you about the great game that Kobe had last week against Wake Forest. Extra effort from the sophomore here to get a couple more. Yeah, they went right back to the same concept. Continuing to test the Carolina defense. See if they can still hold up. Couple of pullers coming across the ball, the lead pace into the line of scrimmage. Gamecock defense able to force this third down, and the crowd is now re-engaged here in williams Bryce after being quieted on that opening series. Get a turnover, and now a chance for a third down stop. DJ takes off, no place to go. There is a flag on the field.
Illegal formation offense by players in the backfield. Five yard penalty for down. Could be a blessing or a curse, right? As you're sitting here in South Carolina, you're going, we got him stopped. Now the question is whether or not Clemson would go for it, how short it would have been. Basically, Clemson ran the same play three times in a row. That last time, instead of it being a handoff, it was a quarterback counter. That big body of Rui Ungle lay, 250 pounds. And Clay White said it. You get that big body going, he could fall forward for three or four yards. Instead, they got the stop. But the third and long, and the last time Clemson was in the situation, South Carolina blitz, and Louis Ungerle was able to scramble for that 22-yard first down. On third and eight, Louis Ungerle throws, and Collins was looking over the other shoulder. Marcellus Dial right there with him, fourth down. Yet another target for Collins downfield. You're right. He was looking over his inside shoulder. This ball's on the outside. You turned your receiver completely around. Marcellus Dial did not have a feel for where the ball was. He had not turned to play it. Just outside of Dabo Sweeney's comfort zone to put BT Potter on the field. So instead it's Will Spot. Well, no, it is Potter. Excuse me. He does come out. And it looks like Dabo's now going to call a timeout. He he had Spires coming out there to punt, and then Potter came out. Now he wants to rethink this. Potter has made five kicks from over 50-plus. We'll see what Dabo decides to do already. Up seven in the Palmetto Bowl. All right, so Dabo Sweeney kept thinking about it, and then he yelled, punt. Will Spires. Will come onto the field as DJ Gui Ungalale watches from the bench on this fourth down. By the way, expires. Stench, this will blow your mind. For you played in 46 college football games. You are all American. This guy is starting for the 68th straight game. <laughs> That's unreal, man. That's pretty remarkable, actually. Get an extra year of eligibility due to COVID. There's a chance this point to get to 69 with the bowl game, and that is a fair catch at the five-yard line. Let's look at the road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. We already knew that these two teams would lock up next week. These were before today's games. Georgia destroyed Georgia Tech, nowhere close to a fair fight. And that Alabama-Auburn game was crazy. Auburn controlled it from almost start to finish. Tied didn't have any points going into the fourth quarter, but somehow won. What do you think happens with the tie and the dogs next week? Well, you see the injuries that happened in that game, especially at running back for Alabama. Looked to be largely one-dimensional versus that Georgia defense. That is not usually a very winning formula versus Georgia this season. Brown from his own end zone throws, and it's almost picked off as it was Andrew Booth who stepped in front of that ball. And I think he was thinking about standing in the Gamecocks end zone before making the catch. He had six on his mind, there's no doubt. He could almost fall it forward and ended up in the end zone and instead jump that route right underneath Josh Van, the first target for number six of South Carolina. This Andrew Booth, this kid can play. I think we'll see him probably over number six for South Carolina quite a bit in this contest. And Tom Chase says he's one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Harris is spinning and doesn't get anything. Again, that's four total yards for South Carolina as they get ready for this third and ten. Probably part of the reason why Dabo Sweeney elected to punt. And what's happening right now, Clemson defensively, they're slanting and stunning their defensive front. That time, they just kind of pirated their front. That means they're two defensive tackles. They just shifted across the offensive lineman's face after the snap. Sometimes you'll see these defensive front shifts before the snap. As that ball was snapped, you saw there a roller row work right across the face. Looked like Rashawn Lee there at left guard and got in the backfield. And Jason Brown gets something going on a third and ten from his own end zone. He throws, and this one is picked off, and this time Booth makes a clean catch. It's a bad decision. Either that or he's counting on Jaheim Bell to run it out. 
And instead, Bill Bell takes it right up field. Booth comes right out. I think that's exactly what happened. Jaheim Bell runs the wrong route here. Jason Brown, he's throwing it to a spot. Instead, Booth looked like the intended receiver. That's two interceptions in this game by both quarterbacks where it seemed as if the defender was the intended receiver. Booth's ability to control that yeah. football all the way through the process of going to the ground. Now, the offense back on the field. Uwe Ungalale is wrestled down by Damani Staley. Yep, that's Deuce's boy from right here in Columbia. It's a sack. He almost tackled both Uwe Ungalale and Shiplin. What a play in the backfield by Damani Staley. Guy, you know, they lost Rashad Green. This is uh, University of Georgia earlier in the year. They were counting on him at linebacker. Staley had to step up. A big negative yardage play there. Loss of three. Back to the 16-yard line. Now Shipley. And he's tackled near the 12 by Jalen Foster. How about this guy? Tied for the national lead in interceptions. Also leads his team in tackles. And they say he embodies everything they want to be on that side of the ball. Always around him, generating takeaways. How about making open field tackles coming up there and run support from his safety spot. That's a solo tackle versus an excellent runner in Shipley in the hole. Shipley drops it. That's an incomplete pass. Taylor, that was something we were talking about with the Clemson coaching staff. With these running backs as receivers, you think Travis Etienne last year had 48 catches out of the backfield. And right there, it's just, it's almost like a toss. That's an overhand toss to get the Shipley on the per perimeter. That's two drops in this game now. Running back position, coming up short there with a chance to run in space. B.T. Potter, senior from Rock Hill, South Carolina, just inside. 30 yards, officially a 29-yard field goal try. And South Carolina, after the Jason Brown interception, gives up three to the Tigers. We think about it this game, you know, what would be the formula to win if you're South Carolina? Takeaways, big. The problem has been they're on the losing side of the field position battle. They've been on their own 14 is their average drive start. And then... You can see the takeaway to Booth. They're lucky that Booth doesn't go take that and run right through the hedges on the back side of that end zone. And instead, he missed the first pick, would have been one, made a great job of maintaining possession on what looked like he was running the out route. But for the defense to get the stop there and force a field goal attempt is huge for South Carolina. Just a second, we're going to take a look at your picks. Your top four, which has changed, by the way, given the results of today. Crazy that the Clemson Tigers are not in them. They are back in the top 25, though. The first time in over a month. Incox get it at the 25. All right. So we know you have the dogs on top. What happens after that? Well, then I think you got to put the Wolverines, who the committee has loved, the entire time, despite their loss to Michigan State. Boy, they feel validated now. Alabama with the close win, but a win nonetheless. They're at number three, and then Cincinnati is undefeated. And they've beaten who I have right there at number five in Notre Dame. That's basically their validating win in Oklahoma State with an opportunity to leapfrog, I think, at least Notre Dame. And the Wildcat, Kevin Harris, he doesn't get anything. Clemson forces the tackle there as it's Tyler Davis, the big defensive tackle, second and 10 to the field and Alyssa. Yeah, guys, no matter what Clemson's record has looked like this year, this defense is still one of the better defenses in the country, certainly in their conference. They proved that against Wake Forest a week ago. I talked to James Skalski, the linebacker, number 47, going into that Wake Forest game about his defense and what makes them special. He said, you know, when it comes to our unit, not a ton of vocal leaders. I don't have to do a lot of rah-rah or talking to get guys riled up. We have a bunch of killers. They're always locked in, ready to go compete. It's White. And he gets a couple. It'll be third and eight. Skowski is 
no question the emotional leader even though he doesn't have to say much this is what he said about South Carolina though why do I hate them because they want to be us so bad and they can't I mean those so much. he said a lot there he Taylor. sure did I mean those are fighting words there well, that's a guy that's not scared of a fight well, he's been in a lot of contests one of those super seniors this too is his 68th game for Clemson a little bit different a middle linebacker than it is a punter Gamecocks are 0 for 3 on third down already Completion to Joyner, but the route was about two yards shy of where they needed to get. Make that Brown, excuse me. Marion Brown, the Georgia Tech transfer, but it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, it comes to playing coverage on that one. Didn't bring pressure, just rushed three, really just trying to contain Brown in the pocket. Marion Brown with nice effort after the fact, but was well out of bounds. Once again, the Clemson defense able to hold up. The South Carolina at least able to punt this football with a chance to flip the field to where Clemson will have at least more ground to cover to get to midfield. They've been playing on South Carolina's side most of the night. Berger, another good punt. is fielded at the 24 by Brown. And he'll lose a few yards back near the 20-yard line. That's a 42-yard punt. Coming up next, SEC football final as you cover the biggest stories of the day and breakdowns of all the games. Dari Noka hosts along with Chris Doring and Benjamin Watson this week right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN F1 F1 tap. No Chiz, Chiz went to the quite possibly the craziest Iron Bowl ever. I mean, I know the kick six 2013's That's up there too, but yeah. four overtimes in Jordan here today that Chiz went and saw. Has there ever been an overtime in the Iron Bowl before? I don't believe so. I can't remember one. Certainly not a four overtime, but that's for sure. Ace and Shipley are both back there. We under the leg throws on the run. Nice ball. And it's caught by Dakari Collins for a first down. So both the play callers got a little bit conservative, right? After those interceptions by their quarterbacks, both of them went right back to the ground. Collins is a guy, as a true freshman, expected him to step up big. They need to find some receivers. Shane Beamers. Gamecocks down 10 at the end of the first. It is 10-0 Clemson at the end of the first quarter. Tiger defense has dominated the Gamecock offense. Look at that 12 total yard snitch. Gamecocks don't have a first down yet. Look at it. There's 12 plays, and of course Clemson. They haven't been clean offensively either, and yet they've been able to take advantage of a turnover at short field. That does 10 points right now. Louis Ungalale threw a pick to Cam Smith. He goes to the ground, and Kobe Pace, and Pace swallowed up at the 38 by Brad Johnson, gets a couple on second down. Brad Johnson, one of those mini Gamecocks that hails from this state. He grew up in Pendleton, South Carolina, just 10 minutes from Tiger Stadium. That's Danny Ford country, by the way. Oh, Coach Ford's watching tonight. Pace and Shipley splitting DJ in the backfield, and it's Pace again. First down run for the Tigers. Nice push on the left side of the Clemson offensive front. Big hole at the line of scrimmage. And a physical finish to this run by Kobe Pace. He beats Jalen Foster, probably the most sound tackler on the Carolina defense. And he does get him to the ground, but not before Pace picks up another three hard-earned yards right over top of the leading tackler of the Gamecocks. He's already with 20 yards rushing. And now Shipley. And it's another first down. Out, almost down to the 40-yard line. It's 11 more. There is a flag down, though. Evidently picked up. Didn't mean to be dropped. The Gamecocks 42-yard line. Fake to Shipley throw, and it's caught 
And it's a pickup of five to Will Sweeney, the graduate player. Got his first career start last week in his 67th football game. Good to see him get a get saluted on senior day, but also starting in Park Stench because they don't have any bodies left yeah. in wide receiver. He's the only senior recognized on the offensive side of the ball in that game last week versus the Demon Deacons. Speaks to the youth the Tigers have on offense. Make the toss in New Yungle is ahead inside the 35 where Staley makes the stop. It'll be third down for the Tigers. Heavy counter runs. A lot of these counter looks. That time, the second time we've seen the QB counter run. The pull from the left side, Hunter Rayburn coming all the way across the formation. He's led in there. Jake Brittick's stool as well. The tight end. So you can keep it on the ground again on third down. South Carolina in a rundown blitz. They blitz both inside linebackers, Brad Johnson and Damani Staley. They're both taken care of by the Clemson interior offensive front guys that have been rotating all over the place all season long. Nothing but new faces. They're able to get a nice pickup and pace with a clean hole. Kobe Pace was in the concussion protocol after the November 6th game at Louisville. He did not play against UConn two weeks ago. Then he went off with his career performance against Wake last week, picking up right where he left off. Clemson gashing the Gamecocks so far. 141 rushing yards already in the game with 12-10 to go in the second quarter. Meanwhile, the Clemson defense hasn't allowed a Gamecocks first down yet. 118th playing of the Palmetto Bowl. And Gamecocks will get it at the 25. More football from the Palmetto Bowl in 10 seconds. With Alyssa Lang and Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Taylor Zarzer. I'm a city of the Palmetto State. This game was played every year here until the 1960s on what was called Big Thursday in October during the State Fair, which is, of course is just across the street. And then they started going home and home since then. You have to go back to the 50s. The last time they played two straight in the series in the same place. Brown tries to step up and there's the first first down of the game. It's a big throw to E.J. Jenkins into Clemson territory. First time I believe we've seen E.J. Jenkins in there. Basically three tight ends in the formation. And they run play action. E.J. Jenkins just keeps working across the field. And both these guys know each other well. They transferred in from St. Francis. Practically grew up together. E.J. Jenkins a huge target at 6'7", 250 pounds, with the biggest play of the night for the Carolina offense. It's his longest career catch, a 30-yarder. Brown picks it up off the ground. Has plenty of time off his back foot. Just too far in front of Van. Looked like he was going to have Jenkins again. Instead, Brown had to kind of take his eyes off the route briefly. A little bit of pressure in his face late. Josh Van with a chance to come up with that catch. Good job by Baylor Spector just getting his arms up just to kind of disrupt. I think otherwise Van makes that catch. And you wonder also, does the hamstring yeah. also factor in there that Van's been bothered by? By the way, Jenkins has a quad injury he's dealing with. All these Gamecocks are banged up. 
Here's Marshawn Lloyd. It's a fourth different tailback. Again, Cox have tried. He picks up three. Skalski on the tackle. Well, Lloyd's been pretty quiet. He's been largely as a quandary white for the Gamecock offense the past couple of weeks. Lloyd, a guy that missed the entire season a year ago, that knee injury, still really hasn't rounded fully into form. So he's going to get opportunities at the very least here in the formation after that last carry in for yet this next play. Gamecocks looking for their first third down conversion of the night. Is flushed out, throws to the end zone, and it's over the head of Jenkins, who is covered up by Mario Goodrich. Jenkins had kind of stopped running, fighting through Jenkins there towards the end of the route. Brown was just trying to give his receiver a chance downfield, showing that escape ability. You can see Jenkins, it looked like he kind of shut it down there right along the boundary. Sees the ball in the air, tries to get going again, and he and Jenkins get tangled up. Ready the fourth punt for Kai Kroger. Will Brown standing on his own 10-yard line. Trying to pin Clemson deep. Brown with a fair catch just inside the 10. There is a flag on the field. Throwing the kick, holding number 90, 98, receiving team. At the distance of the goal penalty, first down. Timeout. Debo Sweeney's team will take over at their own five yard line, looking for their seventh consecutive win in the series. Well, it was the summer of 1980 when the idea of Clemson wearing orange pants presented itself to the equipment manager, eventually Danny Ford, gave him the go-ahead to order those pants after a big win against Wake Forest 19 days before hosting South Carolina in Death Valley. They knew they were going to need a little bit of a boost to beat the Gamecocks that year. They're at the great season in Columbia. George Rogers was on his way to winning the Heisman. The pants didn't end up at the plant until three days before the game. They were delayed even more, not ready till three o'clock the day before. They were up all night, all morning, getting them in, putting the identifications on. Clemson got to the top of the hill, ran down full orange, ended up beating the Gamecocks 27 to six, leading them to that perfect run in 1981. Got him on tonight and already have a 17 nothing lead as Phil Maffa falls ahead for a few and obviously they're very particular stench about wearing these orange britches because they need to be playing for a championship in order to wear them well this is the only one they could play for in 2021 here they are state championship right bragging rights not a question will be can the south carolina defense take advantage of the worst starting field position the clemson has experienced this entire game a couple of seven play drives more than 70 yards the last one covering 79 yards can South Carolina get a stop and flip the field? Again, it's Mappo running hard, and he is tracked down at the 14-yard line. As R.J. Roderick comes in there to, to make the tackle, it'll be third and one. And this is your coming out offense. You want to hand the football off, give your offense room to work. Instead, Clemson doing a good job picking up those positive yards to set up a third and short. He's right back in the backfield here with Mafa behind Uwe Ungerle. First down up near the 17. They had a shot at it in the backfield. Instead, Tony Elliott able to get his offense a first down and a crucial one at that mentioned after the punt a chance to get back with good field position it's in the right part of that booth near the edge of the window for turn 42 yesterday Clemson Lifer fakes it to Mamba throws wide open and it's caught by Collins past midfield Collins 
Collins had to fight for this catch because he gets mugged on the route. They're beaten right now. What you couldn't see quite there was that he ends up having to fight through what was an attempted tackle by Cam Smith. He knew he was beat. He would rather take the P.I. Instead, Collins fights right back through it and still makes the catch. It's a 37-yard pickup for the true freshman from Atlanta. And now it's Maffa back to work as Zach Pickens makes the tackle as, as Collins is emerging here tonight. Remember, E.J. Williams is not playing again. He had minor surgery a few weeks ago. Justin Ross, his career is, is over. He'll go to the pros next, next year. He broke his foot and had surgery. Joseph Ngata had the foot injury against Louisville. He's not ready to go. Troy Stilato hurt his heel in warm-ups against Louisville last week. Brandon Spector never played this season. Might be back for the bowl game. Crazy what's happened to the receivers. Meanwhile, the running backs are healthy, Stitch. Phil Maffa, the true freshman from Loganville, Georgia, to the 38. Well, it's been a good thing, that's for sure. I mean, even tonight, you think about after the interception, what can you do? You can turn back to that ground game, pick up some yards there. But the wide receiver position, that room has been a mash unit all year long for the Clemson Tiger offense. And that's largely, I think, owing to a lot of the inconsistency that they've seen offensively, especially in the passing game. And he's going to be about a yard shy. Jordan Strawn preventing the first down. It'll be fourth and one. Pretty well read by Strawn. Transferred in Georgia State a year ago. It's kind of a sack specialist. And this time they get it to Shipley on that reverse. And it's just well defended by South Carolina. We saw some indecision earlier, Taylor, where you kick a field goal or punt. This time they're saying, forget it, we'll go for it on fourth and show that big quarterback. Timeout called on the field on this fourth and one for Dabo. Cocky and the Gamecocks trying to get off the field on a fourth and one. Clemson needs a full yard here, Stench. What do you like? Well, after the timeout, they might line up differently, but Uwe Embalale was under center. Looked to me like they were just going to get into center, snap it, and run a QB sneak. You got that big quarterback. He's 250 pounds. Now they're back in the shotgun. And South Carolina is offsides. Free play. Incomplete. As Bo Collins was the intended receiver, there is still no flag on the field yet. I, I just saw the front line twitch. I don't think they made contact, and I don't think that they made, they were in the neutral zone when the ball was snapped. Watch both inside defensive tackles. They both twitch on the clap. And then go across. And then they go across. No flag came out. Clemson thought that they had a free play. Instead, it's a turnover on downs, and you to read Dabo's lifts, unbelievable. Gamecocks get it back at their own 36-yard line. Brown under center, hands to White. And he goes ahead past the 40, up to the 41-yard line for six yards. So Quandre had 99 yards rushing last week. And the win against Auburn, 69 yards receiving as well. Jaheim Bell is the fullback that is lined up in front of White. Welcome to 1990s football here. <laughs> takes on two guys otherwise White would have been left for dead instead he's about a yard shy of the first down the penetration was right now and you're right Bell does a great job of just running interference this is a block and this is just like trying to absorb as many defenders as you can they actually it looked as if they were trying to tackle Bell I think maybe they thought that Bell had the ball there Said it worked out great because otherwise White doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Instead, he's able to fight for positive yards. Still 
under center. And this handoff goes to Harris. And it's a first down for the Gamecocks. A couple of throwback formations, right? Full house backfield. Give it to your big back and Kevin Harris. And he's able to eke it over the line to gain. I haven't seen South Carolina test the right side of that Clemson front. They haven't run left a lot. You know, they've had difficulties all season long, especially at left tackle. Jalen Nichols only getting his second start at left tackle tonight. Now Harris climbs ahead for one. Yes. Booth, then that interception comes up to make the tackle. Andrew Booth can play, can he? I mean, this guy should probably have two interceptions in this game. Would have been a sure pick six. If he weren't thinking touchdown, he probably comes up with it. Instead, he comes up with a great catch later. At that time, the run support triggers right into that backfield to make the tackle. Well, you know what a first-round draft pick looks like. You were one, and I love going on the field with you beforehand. You'll see somebody in warm-ups, and you'll just hit me and say, 23, man, watch this guy. Brown sets his feet, throws the deep ball into double coverage. And it's intercepted at the one-yard line by the aforementioned Andrew Booth. He said he makes a play in the run game. He comes right back with his second takeaway of the night. Jason Brown just with the YOLO ball. Just, hey, man, let's just put it up there. Josh Vance back there. I'm not sure. The Josh Van found this football. You see him, he's looking down as the ball would have arrived instead of even trying to make the play. He's asking for defensive pass interference. Booth is just trying to make the play on that ball in the air. Second interception for the Clemson secondary. But what's crazy is that's nowhere even close to his most impressive interception. He had an OBJ like one against UVA earlier this season. Came in with three career interceptions. He's got two tonight. But Clemson is pinned deep at their own one. Shipley six yards deep. Leungle just presses forward. Wow. And a man playing quarterback trapped in a defensive tackle's body plows ahead for five. How about that push? Man, the orange wave. And he did. He just kind of rode it up there. It makes you wonder. You go back to that fourth down play. Maybe they should have stuck with the QB sneak. Perhaps could have converted. Regardless, again, coming out offense for Clemson. That's a great first play coming up there at goal line. On second and five, it's Shipley with plenty of running room. And he gets ahead. Past the 12 before Jalen Foster makes the tackle. We knew Clemson's tailbacks were thought, everybody thought so much of them coming into the game, but we wondered if that Clemson offensive line would be able to push that Gamecock front around they have so far. Yeah, they've done a good job. And it's not just covering guys up, they've gotten some movement, just like they did on that very first down play with Louis Underwood keeping it. Shipley set up his own blocks on that last run. Shipley is ahead to the 17-yard the line. They, these offensive linemen only have a few that they put in the NFL in, in the Dabo Sweeney era. And Jackson Carmen, Mitch Hyatt, Tremaine Ankrum, they're, they're all the NFL. They've, they've got a big five-star recruit in Tristan Lee that is on their bench right now. But these guys, Shipley and Pace, have been running behind Jordan McFadden. Marcus Tate, Hunter Rayburn, Will Putnam, and Walker Parks the last couple of weeks. As Dabo Sweeney told us yesterday, Stitch, these are the, his best five. It's taken a long time to get them all out on the field. Yeah, we can talk about the size difference. Clemson takes that time out. So far, those undersized guys up front for Clemson have been handling business. Well said by those guys. Meanwhile, Clemson's offensive line has looked really good. Getting a push on a second and six. They hand it to Shipley, and he follows those guys up to the 23-yard line, right near a first down marker. And it is one. 
How about the job that that front has done so far for Shipley, Pace, and Mafa? Oh, and right now, they're over halfway to the total yards they had rushing a game ago. There's a flag down on the field. Incomplete. It's a legal procedure on the Clemson offense. A high throw, dangerous throw by Uri Ungalale. It's now 5 of 11 on the night. It's been the ground game. Illegal motion, offense number three. Penalties decline. Second down. It's Dakari Collins who had a big catch already in the game. I'll tell you the run game, though. Watching Shipley as a true freshman, you know, he's patient to the hole. He doesn't try to force it. He does a good job. He's really efficient. He sets up the defenders to where he can get the cut that he wants. He did that earlier when he ran to the left side. He did it there on the previous carry before that pass attempt. DJ takes off on a design QB run. And he's ahead to the 31-yard the line. Shipley has 10 rushing touchdowns on the season stench. And you've mentioned Travis Etienne losing him. I thought was just about as big a loss as losing the first pick in the draft, Trevor Lawrence. It's one thing to lose arguably the best quarterback in the game, but also losing one of the best tailbacks in college football last year. ETN, three touchdowns ahead of Shipley for a single season record. Louis Ungalale on the third and three has to throw it away. Good coverage by the Gamecocks defense. That time, nowhere to go with the football downfield. Jordan Strawn, a hard time getting loose on his pass rush. Looked like maybe he was going to be able to get to Uri Ungolale before he unloaded that football. You know, it's interesting in this game because South Carolina, you think coming into it, you know that they've had difficulties, their struggles at quarterback, a lot of new faces, injuries at wide receiver. Think that the concerted effort would be stop this run, find a way to force Clemson into passing downs. They've had their opportunities, a scramble that bailed them out on that first series. Here they're able to get a defensive stop. Spires punting to Van. On that hamstring, Van, this is a bad punt by Spires. You don't wow. see this very often off the side of his foot. Let's see where this guy goes out. Officials out at the 40-yard line. It's just a 29-yard punt. 19 seconds left. Our next SEC story films the trials of Bobby Hoppy premieres Thursday. It's a story of the 1957 Auburn National Championship football team and the dark secret that Bobby Hoppy kept for more than 30 years. It's a fascinating story that you won't want to miss Thursday on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Now, remember, the Gamecocks have two timeouts here, and they get the ball first in the second half. So can somehow get 20, 25 yards for Parker White. I feel like a major coup. Brown steps up and throws it at the feet of Joyner, who was open. Second down. Kind of pulled the string on that throw. He kind of jumped into it. Thought maybe he was just going to run, and maybe he changed his mind there at the last minute as he saw Joyner coming across. And Clemson playing coverage that time, only rushed three. And Brown pressed up into the pocket. They've had a real hard time getting loose in this secondary. And as you mentioned, Van, he kind of hobbled a little bit by that hamstring. Certainly slowed things down on the perimeter. Brown flushed out against his body, throws to the Clemson bench, seven seconds left. It's really nowhere to go downfield. See, it's been a quiet night, obviously, in the passing game. Otherwise, you know, some throws, ill-advised ones at that. Two picks in this game. He's done a relatively good job since he came in. A couple of picks when he came in for an injured Zeb Nolan versus A&M. Otherwise, he's been relatively efficient. They haven't asked him to go out there and win games. He's extended drives, made key plays, especially versus Florida. Here tonight, he's had his struggles in the first half. line but time expires as Bell makes the catch Clemson takes a 17 nothing lead 
into the break. Coming up at halftime, the mighty sound of the Southeast Marching Band. You can listen to that on SEC Network Plus. Clemson looking for their seventh consecutive win in the series. Hasn't been done since the 30s. Dabo Sweeney looking to be the first head coach in the series to win seven in a row. To one heck of a start, up 17-0, and Dabo's with Alyssa. Coach, some big plays from your offense in the first half. How do you continue that in the second? Well, we just got to keep running the ball. We got backed up in a couple of tough field positions and did a good job of flipping the field. We, unfortunate on the, on the we outsmarted ourselves on the fourth and one, so we came off the goal line and got in that situation. So they didn't jump, and, and we snapped it. So that was a, a tough, tough break. But proud of how they're playing. We're running the ball defensively. We're stopping the run. We've created some turnovers. So we just got to keep doing what we're doing. What kind of momentum has your defense given you so far in this game? Well, no points. That's as good a momentum as you can have. Thanks, Coach. All right. Quite a start for a man that played in the Southeastern Conference, trying to beat up on the school, the conference he played for, once again up 17 to nothing. We go back to the studio for the region's halftime report with Dari, Benjamin, and Chris. We'll get it. And they're coming out. Juju McDowell, two yards deep. Doesn't get to the 20 yard line. Let's look at the first half stats brought to you by Zaxby's. Look at those Gamecocks numbers. Brent Venable's defense has been sensational. Yeah, we talked about the efficiency of the Clemson offense, it's the inefficiency of South Carolina, especially on first downs. And by the time they get to that third down attempt, they're averaging eight yards to go. Versus a defense like this, you're setting yourself up for failure. And especially considering when you look at South Carolina tonight, their receiving options have largely been reduced because Josh Van, despite being targeted, clearly is not full speed at his wide receiver position. The biggest play of the night has been the EJ Jenkins in the second quarter. Jason Brown trying to get going. Nick Mews in motion, swings it out to White. So Quandre makes a man miss and gets up near the 28-yard line. Alyssa, how does this Gamecocks offense get going? Yeah, guys, I just caught up with Shane Beamer coming out of the half. He was frustrated. He said, we're not playing Carolina football right now. We're making mistakes. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. We're not doing everything that we focused on coming into this week. He said, I almost feel like the entire team, Jason Brown included, needs to settle down a little bit. I feel like we came into this one expecting to do too much, a little too amped, thinking that we have to do more than we need to. We just have to play Carolina football when we play Played well, we're capable of coming back. He said, we're a second half team, we could do that tonight. We have been one all season long. Bell in the open field loses yardage. It's a loss of two. Trenton Simpson, the tackle for loss. It seems like that's the second time. Very similar play going back to the first quarter. Get a completion to Bell. He turns to try to get upfield and gets rejected by the Clemson secondary. It's been a tough night for number zero for South Carolina. They're trying to get him involved. Hadn't worked out. Feels like if the Gamecocks are going to make this interesting, they need to convert on this play here. Yeah, they need to get something going. There's no doubt. Talk about being a come from behind team. They've been down 14 points twice and come back and until they get something going offensively. Brown's in trouble. He's running the wrong direction. Throws against his body to the Gamecocks bench. Clemson forces another three and out as Miles Murphy was in the backfield. Miles Murphy won right now. He's one of their better pass rushers. Had seven sacks coming in on the night. And he wins right now underneath Jalen Nichols. We talk about him. Spent most of the time in the early part of the season at left guard. He's played left tackle before. They made the change last week. He hadn't had a ton of reps there. That time, Miles Murphy with the pressure. Ty Kroger for the fifth time. And a fair catch at the 36-yard line by Will Brown. And while South Carolina's offense hasn't been able to do much, Clemson has been led by two horses in the backfield, Will Shipley and Kobe Pace, each with over 50 yards rushing stench and each with a touchdown. Yeah, like we said, you know, last week they kind of emerged. 
Both those guys have missed time. So Shipley's missed three games. Pace was banged up. Didn't get touches in a couple of games. And then they both kind of converged in that game versus Wake Forest. And they had picked up right where they left off. And now both in the backfield for Clemson. Shipley running past that defensive front. Tackled by Enik Bari at the 45-yard line. That's one thing we wondered about tonight, Stinch, is could that impressive South Carolina defensive front get to these backs? They have not been able to. No, and they've actually been covered up relatively well by the Clemson offensive line. They've done an excellent job at the point of attack. Shipley again, patient running, and he's past midfield. Into Gamecocks territory to the 47-yard line where Roderick makes the tackle. It's another first down for the Tigers. And these are inside runs. These are physical downhill runs. Coming into this game, South Carolina felt as if they it was advantage Gamecocks. When you talk about the line of scrimmage when they were out there on defense, because of their size advantage, that has not been the case. Clemson, an offensive front that's been much maligned this season, has done an excellent job all night. Shipley down to the 40-yard line where Spalding makes the tackle. Clemson on the game already 200 yards rushing tonight. It's just, you know, there's a couple of clinic reel blocks that we're seeing, combination blocks, and what makes it so impressive by this offensive front is, like I said, the only guys that have gone wire to wire in the same position are Jordan McFadden, number 71, at left tackle. And Walker Parks, 64 right tackle. Otherwise, it's been mix and match. Shipley bangs ahead. It's another first down. Down to the Gamecocks 35-yard line. If, if Shipley, who just did, he went over 100 yards. He is the first Clemson tailback, true freshman tailback, since C.J. Spiller, 15 years ago, to have three plus 100-yard games in the same season. Well, right now, you know, Clemson's just turning this game into an inside run throw. 28 rushes of their 40 offensive plays have all been on the ground. Finally, somebody else gets in the action. This is a Joe, a Joe. And here's a flag down. Ten-yard penalty, first down. Got Davis Allen, who tied in by trade, but spends a lot of time flexed out, lined up in a wide receiver position. Part of that's a function of their depth issues, and he's out there, and it's just basically, this is a long handoff, C-84. Whenever you see a defender's arm go flailing up, the, the flags almost always come out. I don't know that that was necessarily warranted one, regardless, walking R.J. Roderick. Through the flag, the back clips it up. Pace about seven yards behind Uyunglele. TJ keeps it, dumps it off to Kobe in open space. And the athleticism gets him down to the 31 yard line. It's a pickup of 14 for the sophomore. Well, this could have gone a lot more. I mean, it really could have. Stash relatively well defended. You see there, a great job of at least triggering up. Be able to get a chunk of that yardage that you conceded on that previous holding penalty to get it to second management. Spinning in motion, and Shipley spinning down to the, the 30 yard line. Even when he doesn't have anything, he seems to find a way to make something out of nothing. This true freshman from just outside of Charlotte, Weddington High School. Immediately has emerged as the next great Clemson tailback. Yeah, set the tone early. Very first play of the game. Should have been a tackle for loss. Instead, Shipley finds a way to get positive yards. See if Clemson puts it in the air on what has largely been a run oriented offense here in the second half. See South Carolina with their linebackers mugged up in the line of scrimmage. Both inside linebackers on in both A gaps, either side of the center. Shipley protecting Uwe Ungerle to the end zone. Incomplete. No flag thrown. It was Bo Collins and Darius Rush. One-on-one -on -one ball, fourth down. 
great job on this pickup, though. South Carolina was coming, clean pocket, no penetration. It's well defended by Darius Rush. Like to get his head back around, trying to play that ball regardless. Uh, went up, divided the hands of would-be receiver that's well defended to force this field goal attempt. It's a 47-yarder for BT Potter. it back in it's good Dabo loves it played at the right side of the green just a little baby draw in there <laughs> 20 to nothing Clemson this is SEC Saturday night presented by T-Mobile Clemson Tigers up 20 to nothing on their in-state rival South Carolina Gamecocks beat Team Potter. Now fourth all-time in points for the Tigers after that 47-yard field goal. Clemson has the lead in this series, 71-42 to four. They've won six in a row, looking for their first seven-game winning streak in over 80 years. Great to have this rivalry back. McDowell coming out again. Long Tigers up at the 22 yard line. Wondering to see if Jason Brown is going to get going. He, he's been terrific for the Gamecocks the last three weeks. In part, he had to play because Seb Nolan had surgery on his meniscus three weeks ago. He is healthy tonight, Seb is, and is listed as the backup quarterback if, if the Gamecocks need him. But they're sticking with Jason Brown, who needs to get going with Kevin Harris. It's Quandre White in the backfield. Harris straight ahead. And the offensive linemen push him ahead to the 28. Why has the South Carolina offensive line had so much had so many struggles tonight, Stinch, with that Clemson front? Yeah, part of it's been the movement that the defensive front uses after the snap. Where they're stimming, so they'll, they'll line up on the outside shoulder of the offensive lineman, but they're going to work right across that lineman's face to his inside shoulder. That changes your aiming point after the ball's been snapped. That's been difficult, proven to be difficult for the offensive front. And partly just because this defense for Clemson, is, despite this being an off year, quote unquote, of adversity, the defense for Clemson has still been on schedule once again. There's just no running room. That previous play was the most promising looking hole that we've seen on an inside run. And Balin Spector made a clinic real tackle in the hole. Now here, see Tyler Davis, and so what they did was all they did was swap responsibilities on the inside. So you've got two defensive linemen and they're just kind of stunning. It's a rundown stunt. That's how it was Ruben and Davis. They just swap responsibilities and it confuses that blocking scheme and you get a free half the hole. You feel like at some point, the Gamecocks are going to have to confuse Brent Venables and the 11 Tigers on the field. Brown, an underneath throw, and it's a first down for DeCarion Joyner. Up past the 40-yard line, a 13-yard reception for the junior from Charleston, South Carolina. Well, the timing up on this play was all screwed up from the get-go. Watch the double clutch by Jason Brown because he knows that ball gets tipped right now if he throws it. Instead, looks like he got Xavier Thomas off his feet. Comes back down, and he's able to hit Joyner underneath. And Joyner, who they've had a hard time all season giving him probably the touches that he warrants as an athlete in space, did a great job of getting up field. Gamecocks out near the 40, and Harris gets a few. You know, Marcus Satterfield, the offense coordinator for South Carolina, said this about Brent Venables. He throws the kitchen sink at you. I've never seen anything like it with no rhyme or reason. You were talking to Brent earlier this morning about that. And I know he's saying that being multiple, giving the complexion of being multiple, is something that confuses every other offense. Yeah, he talked about the flexibility he's got within his scheme, but also just the veteran presence that he has. Tons of veteran players, a lot of experience on the field for this Clemson of defense, and they can make adjustments on the fly. Down on the second and seven, throws behind White. 
It'll be third and seven. Even if White catches it, I'm not yeah. sure he would have done much. I mean, just as well, right? K.J. Henry closing in on him almost immediately. He makes that catch. He's probably not going anywhere with it. And this on the heels of a really impressive performance by White as a receiver out of the backfield. Two big plays versus Auburn. One that got in the end zone. That one was not going to be going far. We talked about it. And the defense got a big stop for South Carolina to force that field goal. But offensively, they have to find a way to get something going. The ground game doesn't seem to be the answer tonight. Third and seven, Brown running for his life, throws back to White, but he's going to lose yardage back at the 40-yard line. Incredible pressure by Trenton Simpson there, and Brent Venable's defense does it again. They did a great job of getting the attention of the protection inside. So James Skalski was lined up right over the center, and Eric Douglas, and instead they end up bringing Trenton Simpson the right side of that offensive formation. He was unaccounted for a free run with great closing speed on Jason Brown. He was lucky to get that ball unloaded. Another Kroger punt. Brown lets it go over his head. And Kroger perfectly pins Clemson inside the one yard line. Wow. What a punt by the sophomore from Lake Forest, Illinois. This Gamecocks need some points. Pens Clemson deep inside the one. Every single week this season, our crew eats like a champion. This week, we were led to Zesto, a classic here in Columbia. Everybody knows the ice cream cone on top. They've got chicken, they've got burgers, they got ice cream. I think the ice cream would have melted had we gotten it pregame, but we got Zesto burgers, y'all. Yeah, we do, and they're delicious. We got some chicken up here, too. Even cold, they're delicious. Outstanding. What a spot over in West Columbia. It was fun going over there today. Checking that place out. It's been great to eat like a champion all season long. Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers been feasting on chicken all night tonight. But they're at their own one-yard line. DJ Uyunglele deep in his own end zone. Lobs it up there, and it's incomplete. That was Rush. Right in coverage with Takari Collins, second down. Typically, this would be a spot where Matt Stinchcomb would analyze his replay, but he can't right now because he's got a half of a cheeseburger in his mouth. Nice play by Darius Rush. <laughs> got a little aggressive with that last fight. Sorry. Good play by the junior from King Street, South Carolina. Second and ten. Uli Ungalale under center now. Turns and hands to pace. And Kobe will get ahead just to the two. It'll be third and nine from there. Huge opportunity for South Carolina right here. They take a shot on first down. This coming out offense, which Clemson has been put in this position a couple of times in this game. Did a great job earlier with it, but this time you miss on that shot play. Then you get stuffed on your second down play. A big chance for South Carolina to set their offense up with decent field position, maybe even excellent field position. Biggest third down of the night for the Carolina defense. Hands to pace, and Kobe is greeted at the four-yard line by R.J. Roderick. A three and out. For the Gamecocks defense. I got to tell you, it's, it's a little bit of a statement. I get running the football again. A little bit of a statement, though, I think, of Clemson and where they are in this passing game, where you, know, you took that shot on the first play. Probably wasn't going to be successful. It was well covered downfield. We've already seen an interception in this game, and it's been the run game for Clemson. If they hadn't gotten going on that third down, you think maybe you throw it right now. You're kicking off the back line of your own end zone. The Spiders had to move up a little bit. He was out of the end zone. And he steps back into it. From under the goalpost. 
Punt safe on for the Gamecocks. This will fly down inside the 40 and be downed at the 37-yard line. Just a 33-yard punt. Gamecocks have field position. Can they take advantage of it? Down 20. Well, Jason Brown is wearing a headset now, and he is going to the bench. And in comes Zeb Nolan, the graduate who was here to be an assistant coach, to be a grad assistant, pressed into duty at the beginning of the season when Luke Doty got injured. Zeb had surgery on his meniscus just under a month ago. Back in there, off the bench, with his team having its best field position of the night, starting at the 37-yard line. Nolan back to pass underneath. This is Bell making a man miss and is down to the 30, staying on his feet to the 29. Well, they know with Zeb Nolan, a guy that they can put in the game, and it's not going to rattle him. That's for sure. He wasn't even planning on playing college football this season. Came off the bench, rallied his offense, five completions on a drive to come back and win versus Vanderbilt. And as you mentioned, fantastic starting field position for his first possession of the night. We haven't seen him since Texas A&M when Jason Brown came in, and he's been handling the quarterback duties ever since. To 29, White. Now he'll throw, and it's out of bounds to Van. Third and two. You know, I'm surprised that it's, we've gotten to this point in the game before we saw a play like that. We were talking with the South Carolina coaches. You know, they indicated, look, we recognize we're, we're going to have to make some plays like this. Double passes, reverses. This one was really well defended. Ball's out of bounds. But I'm surprised we didn't see it a little bit earlier. Last week we saw a reverse off a counter action. It was really well designed. Coming into it, they've had seven different players that have thrown a pass for South Carolina. Chris White uncorking that one. Third and two for Nolan. He ends it to Harris. First down, Gamecocks. With a flag that comes in at the end of the play. This one might be coming back. Holding offense, number 53. 10-yard penalty, third down. And Rashawn Lee. Looking against Aurora Row. otherwise a promising run. It's part of the reason why they were able to capture it. You see Aurora work right outside. This is what I'm talking about, the snap. What do they do? They're not just taking on these blocks head on. They're picking the side and playing that gap. They've done a great job of it all night. You have to adjust coming out of your stance as an offensive lineman. It's not easy. But you can see it there. Results in a hole. Takes you out of field goal territory too. Drifts back and throws underneath the Harris, and he is met by Balin Specter at the 41-yard line. And after all of that, the Gamecocks lose four yards on this possession, at least so far. It's a brutal sequence right there for South Carolina. After starting out pretty promising with the completion, you know, Nolan's just trying to find somewhere to go with that football. Kevin Harris, Denver Wright, and Balin Specter. And Makes all the sense in the world. You're like, look, on the plus side of the field, see if you can't try to make something happen on this fourth down attempt. Does Nolan have enough time to make something happen? Neither quarterback, Brown or Nolan, has all night. Jenkins at the bottom of your screen. Nolan's in trouble. He throws underneath. It's incomplete. It's a turnover on downs. Miles Murphy coming around the edge. And Clemson gets the football back. Let's get a studio update from Dari Noka. All right, Taylor, thank you much. It's time for our comeback moment supplemented by Aflac. And we go no further than the Plains. Jordan-Hare Stadium where Alabama trailed Auburn 10-0 into the second half. And then a phenomenal touchdown catch leading to a four-overtime victory. They complete the comeback and they're 11-1, guys. And it's shocking because we we left uh, the boot down to the field 
after Alabama had a turnover on downs with two minutes to go. Got the football back and went 99 yards to force overtime. Shipley doesn't get much. And the funny thing about it was as we were down on the field and stood some of the officials at midfield as everybody was warming up, they were hovering around one of the officials who was watching the game on his phone. Just a, a crazy finish. Sure, they couldn't believe it either, right? I mean, that's an unbelievable drive to come back and tie it and force those overtimes. Meanwhile, this rivalry game has been one-sided since 2014. Louis Unglele, look at that cannon. That's inside the 40 to Will Brown, graduate player from Boiling Springs, South Carolina. Just his second reception of the year. Goes for 26 yards. A little half roll out. Wide open in the secondary is Will Brown. Just a huge missed opportunity for South Carolina to get on the board on that previous possession. And now Clemson, of course, just sopping up all that field position in plus territory once again. Guess what Dabo had for Thanksgiving? Chicken and dressing. Let's take a look at Fansville, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. There's been no disappointment in the stands tonight. A lot of Tiger Orange made the trip over to Columbia to see Stan Storm and a sold-out crowd here. Santa's in the house. Got her eyes. Look at him. He's even naughty or nice. It's Santa. Him. I know him. Kind of indicted there. He's looking at us. Like the victim. The 33-yard line. It's Will Shipley. The flag is coming in as he's down to the 22. Holding offense, number 87. 10-yard penalty, first down. Goes on Sage Ennis. See Dabo, not happy. Always coaching, and I know that he's disappointed. These guys are disappointed. They thought... They thought last night, as you, you see the Ennis penalty here, they thought last night that the Tar Heels were going to help him out. And then NC, NC State has this miracle victory. But clearly, Wake Forest wasn't going to lose to Boston College today. So it's the last regular season game for the Tigers. Not going to the conference championship game for the first time in seven years. Shipley gets down to the 38-yard line, but will have a chance, Stinch, to, to win a 10th game for an 11th straight year. We sent a text to our buddy Mark Schlebaugh, who makes his ESPN Bowl projections each week. He has Clemson in the Gator Bowl at this moment, subject to change, he says. He has South Carolina either in the Birmingham Bowl or the Liberty Bowl, maybe the Dukes-Mayo Bowl, and, and Charlotte could be a possibility as well. Clemson has a lot of history in the Gator Bowl. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting in talking with the Clemson coaches, too. They're talking about the adversity. They lost to the number one team in the country on what was, you know, a pick six. Otherwise, yeah. you'd probably go to overtime. The defense was lights out in that game. You drop an overtime game to NC State, right? I mean, you're, you're looking at loss, and you're in all of it. You lose to Pitt. Pitt's going to represent the ACC in the championship game. Well, this is uh, and in a year where we already talked about it. a lot of replacements, a lot of new faces, including a quarterback, and in this offensive backfield taking handoffs. Third and 11. Stayed on the ground, and Shipley bangs forward to the 32-yard line. It'll be fourth down from there. Zach Pickens helped make the stat. Stop Mohamed Kaba limping there. Clemson on the road. Look at this record, 29 and four since 2015. And they've also been terrific against the SEC and during that span in the college football playoff era. The Tigers are 13 and five against the Southeastern Conference. This is a 49 yard attempt from Potter. This guy's been outstanding all season. 
Another long field goal for the senior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. All Tigers tonight at Williams Bryce Stadium. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. BT Potter has made three more tonight. Having a great year. Senior from Rock Hill, South Carolina, made a 49-yarder just a moment ago, 47-yarder earlier in the game. The top scorers in the history of Clemson's program. Juju McDowell keeps coming out of the end zone. He's yet to get back to the 25-yard line. Jason Brown started the game for the Gamecocks tonight, just eight of 19 passing, 67 yards, and two interceptions, and Zeb Nolan comes out for his second series. Is able to get a completion on that first down. First play of the possession. Looked promising there for a second, only to be undone by a holding penalty. Otherwise, it was a nice run to the outside. Took him out of field goal range, though. They had an excellent field position to start that. Look at Josh Van. We talked about him kind of being picked up. He's had five targets tonight, zero catches. Across the middle. This is caught by Tanner by Nick Muse. You got to get that first name right. Tanner, of course, is <laughs> on the other side. On the other side of this battle, Nick. The transfer from William and Mary is 49 catches over the last two years. Goes for six, second down and four. And now it's Lloyd. He cannot get past Nolan Turner, who forces the third down. It's been so fun watching this guy play six years of college football. Everybody knows about Dabo Sweeney's relationship with his late father, Kevin, who passed away with ALS. Nolan Turner is a football player. Yeah, I mean, this guy didn't come to school here simply because his dad was friends with Dabo. This guy can play. Well, defensive coordinator Brent Venables even mentioned him. We talked about how are y'all able to be so complex. Who are the guys that do all the communicators? It's James Skalski, Nolan Turner. Third and four, and Nolan gets the first down, and look who it is. It's Josh Van, who makes finally makes the grab. We've been talking about the hamstring injury and it just never has looked like Josh has had that burst tonight. Sixth target was a charm. Finally able to come up with the reception. Only the fifth first down of the night for South Carolina offensively. See if that sparks something from the Gamecock offense. Surveys the field and it's another completion to Van out near the 47 yard line. He's fired up. It broke the seal. Josh Van's in there. All of a sudden making it happen. Maybe it took him a couple of quarters to get that hamstring loose. It's a well placed ball from Zeb Nolan. A couple of nice completions now. He got in the game right away. It's a completion on the crossing pattern. Pickup of 16 for the senior from Tucker, Georgia. 88 catches now for Van in his career. Nolan slings it deep, and it's too far in front of E.J. Jenkins, covered up by Goodrich. See, Nolan. The Jenkins was trying to work back inside. Goodrich once again with Jenkins. We've seen him a couple of times targeting. Jenkins downfield, and there's a defender down on the field. Check out who that is in just a moment and we'll be right back. Tuesday night, freshman Phenom Kennedy Chandler in number 15 Tennessee host Presbyterian. It's right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Not much to cheer for tonight for the Gamecocks as Clemson 
has been putting it on the Gamecocks up 23 nothing in this game. Tyler Davis did walk off of the field. He was the injured Clemson Tiger defensive lineman. So it'll be a second down and 10 for the Gamecocks at their own 47 yard line. There's Shane Beamer disappointed in what he's seen out on the field tonight. His offense just with six first downs. And that is thrown to the sideline with Bell covered up by Goodrich. I know he's going to be disappointed in this, but he'd be the first to tell you that he knew that he wasn't going to solve all of the Gamecocks ills in one season. And He's going to take a long time to compete with Clemson on a day-by-day -day basis. Yeah, by many accounts, he's already exceeded the expectation of this season. Coming off a two-win year, we got Luke Doty coming into the season with a busted up foot. He gets forced into service versus Georgia. Lasts a couple of games before he's out for the year. It's been a revolving door at quarterback all season. Third down throw. This goes just short of the first down to, to Josh Van. But you're right, there's no doubt, ton of work to do. You got to bowl season, that'll be huge and pivotal for program and transition. Extra practice time, opportunity to further evaluate the guys that you have. Sam, he's not laying off the gas, plenty to coach for with nine minutes to play. Zaquandre White gets the first down on fourth down inside the Tiger 40. A heck of a run by number 11 right there. The intended point of attack is right downhill. Right in the middle of the offensive front. He just bounces that run all the way to the outside for the yards needed and more. That's the longest run of the night for wow. South Carolina at only six yards. I credit the Clips of defense. They have put the clamps on the Carolina run game. 146 total yards for the Gamecocks, only 36 on the ground. And some movement up front. Ball start, offense, number 52. Five yard penalty, first down. Jalen Nichols, the third different left tackle the Gamecocks have tried this season. Jaston Turnatine and Ja'Kai Moore have played there and now Jalen Nichols, the junior from Myers Park High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Nolan throws near the Clemson bench to Joyner. And the carry-on is, is out of bounds near the 40. That was one thing I wondered tonight, too, Stinch, is if we would see Joyner maybe play some quarterback and line up in a direct snap position. We've seen that at times from him. Of course, he used to play quarterback when Will Muschamp was the coach here. Yeah, you know, saw a lot of uh, different packages last week versus Auburn. Kevin Harris in the Wildcat, the carry Joyner as well. We did see Jaheim Bell line up at tailback at one point in time, or fullback, rather. Nolan slings it, and that is bouncing off of Jenkins incomplete. But that kind of night. Hard to tell. I'm, I'm not sure if Jenkins was the intended receiver right here or if he was trying to get it to Van. But Jenkins runs the wrong route. See, Jenkins and Van both are right there. Neither one of them come up with the catch. See somewhat dejected Jenkins over to the sideline. Gamecocks need to get it inside the Clemson 28. This will help. Van goes down at the 33. Who's fourth down now? Interested to see if Shane Beamer keeps he will keep the offense. Out there on the field now. I'm sure Shane also doesn't want the final score to have a zero next to it, though. On 
fourth and five. It's Nolan loses the football. K.J. Henry slapped it out of there, and the Tigers will get it back. The Tigers shut out the Gamecocks in 1989. They're trying to do it again 33 years later. It is Saturday. It's time to represent your school. Show us how big you're going tonight. Submit your best fan video this week to hashtag show your Saturday, and you may just get your 15 seconds of fan fame. Fans in this state are outstanding. Regardless of record, they've always been so passionate about these two schools. Clemson always selling out Death Valley, They've been so supportive of their team through a somewhat challenging season, and certainly that's been the case for the Gamecock fans tonight at williams Bryce Stadium. And as Kobe Pace gets a couple, Alyssa, we haven't said much about J.J. Inigbari tonight. He's typically one of those names that you're calling a lot when South Carolina is on defense. He's certainly been vocal on the sidelines all night. This game obviously not going the way that South Carolina imagined it. But JJ Nabari is one of those one of those guys who Gamecock fans were really hoping was going to come back this year. Talking to him earlier in the season, he told me that he wasn't sure what he wanted to do. He said when Shane Beamer came in, he wasn't entirely sure what to expect with his new staff. He even went as far as to try to put them in positions to see if they're going to be as consistent as they are in front of the cameras and the media and the fans as they are behind closed doors. And he said Shane Beamer won him over. The culture rebuild won him over. I said, what do you want your legacy to be here in South Carolina? He said, mentoring the younger guys. I want to be able to say that I helped build this thing, influence the next teams by inspiring and motivating. He said, none of that on the field stuff, none of the awards or the accolades or the draft projections, that doesn't matter to me. The only thing that matters is how my teammates and coaches view me. And I can tell you that his teammates and coaches view him with a ton of respect week in and week out, no matter what the scoreboard says. Well said, and it is the truth, and it's not just his coaching staff, the Clemson coaching staff yeah. raved about this guy all week. Louis Underland throwing a football in about an hour, and this one is behind the line of scrimmage to Will Sweeney. He's going to lose yardage back at the 36-yard line where Strawn makes the tackle. Gamecocks call another timeout with 6.27 to go. Need some points. SEC Saturday Night is presented by T-Mobile, the leader in 5G, America's largest, fastest, and most reliable 5G network. Glad the Gamecock is doing well. There have been some crazy things that have happened in the history of, of this rivalry. 60 years ago, some Sigma Nu fraternity brothers in South Carolina snuck onto the field wearing Clemson jerseys and the Clemson band got confused and started playing Tiger Pag. Louis Umbelale on third and 14 throws over the head of Bo Collins. It'll be fourth down. They tried to sneak a cow onto the field, and the cow died on its way to, to the field. How do you sneak a cow? There's a, there's a program from 60 years ago. Huh. Where's the cow? Yeah. I don't think they were prepared for that huh. to come in. There was all kinds of Tom Foolery through the years. By the way, both of these teams used to be in the Southern Conference stench, and the Southern Conference was mad that Clemson was going to accept a bowl bid against their wishes. So both teams decided to leave the conference. They banded together and joined the ACC. How about both that? Of them. A little solidarity. Yeah. And of course, the game Coxon went to the SEC in 1992. We'll get the ball near the 25 yard line. Let's take a look at the five-star play of the game brought to you by Yellowwood. Well, we came in tonight thinking ground game is going to matter. And Kobe Pace on this run kind of blew this game wide open. It looked like it was trending this way. Big hole, nice cut, stiff arm, keeping defenders off of them to get in the end zone. That's been the story all night. Great defense from Clemson, great rushing attack from their offense. 29 rushing yards for the Gamecocks and just seven first downs. That ball tipped. Looking for Van. It's second down. 
know him just looks at the bench said let's throw it down the field yeah. six minutes to go in the game I think part of the problem is is the offensive line hasn't been able to protect the quarterbacks long enough to do that yeah i mean your receivers aren't fast enough to get down there you gotta unload this ball with like three-step timing because the defenders are on top of the would-be passers of south carolina so quickly and there's another batted ball it falls to the ground Antioso Rubin deflected it on the previous play. It looks like that might have hit off of the helmet there. Oh, I can't tell if it was, was it Miles no, Murphy coming yeah, in That there? was Miles Murphy coming straight. No, no, 99. Straight through. That's Greg Williams coming off the bench. And Javon, Javon Gwynn, Gwynn yeah. 32 starts. This veteran player on the team, on the offensive line, strongest guys out there. Boy, he's been durable in his time here in South Carolina. It's been a rough night for those offensive linemen as the Tigers and that championship-level defense has been all over them. You know, Dabo Sweeney said something to us the other day that I found interesting, Stitch. He said he, and he compared his program to the Golden State Warriors, where you're, you're winning championships, you're competing championships on an annual basis, and all of a sudden you have a year where you don't play at the same level. Now, Golden State completely had to hit the reset button as Clay Thompson has been injured and Kevin Durant left and Steph Curry was hurt for a while. And now they're back to being one of the best teams in the NBA. And Dabo said, you know, it's made everybody around Clemson appreciate just how great we had it. And he said, make no mistake, this program is going to be right back where it was. And given the way he's recruiting for next season, I don't think anybody would be surprised if they're back in the college football playoff conversation this time next year. Oh, yeah, a little old Clemson. You know, they, they talk about it as if they just come in from the, from the wings, <laughs> like they're not the, the center of the college football universe. And we don't recruit that well, except for last year's number one recruiting class that we put together. This team's... They're going to be right back at it. A lot of youth on that offensive side of the football is going to have experience next year. Another tip ball. And Skalski. James Skalski is going to finish his career as a Clemson Tiger 5-0 against the Gamecocks. Pretty good hops for an old man. Six years. Don Munson, the, the voice of the Clemson Tigers, in a press conference the other day asked James about his father and who passed away five years ago and how he, what he thinks his father would say to him now. And, and James got, as you can imagine, emotional talking about that, just how proud he thinks his father would be. What a career he's had. Fourth and ten, and Nolan almost had it picked. This Malcolm Green him in the numbers, Clemson will take over. That's two. There could have been picks going the other way. Mercifully deflects. Right off his arms. Otherwise could have gone the other way. Malcolm Greens will go over there and talk to Andrew Booth about what could have been. Both of them could have gotten interceptions to go the other direction. What a very long night for the South Carolina offense. Challenging season in general, really, for that side of the football, for sure. Ooh, the under has gone the whole way. Thought we might see Tyson Pumachan at, at some point. Yeah. Joel Maffa gets a few. Smart, methodical football called by Tony Elliott in the Clemson offense tonight, yielding 240 yards rushing on the ground. It's Tony on the far right. You asked him the other day about staying in Clemson. Just turned 42 yesterday. Man, he gave a powerful answer, didn't he? Yeah. Don't mess with happy. That was kind of the takeaway. There's a guy that, like you said, a Clemson lifer, really spoke to the culture that exists. And it must be phenomenal, because you're talking about two coordinators. Obviously, Tony Elliott turned down opportunities to go 
to other programs. I think Tennessee was mentioned. The Brent Venables had a shot multiple times at other jobs. Power five jobs. Auburn was mentioned. And yet they remain at Clemson. And it's more than just winning football games. Because you've seen a lot of coordinators at winning programs jump at the chance to be a head man. And you know, Devin Sweeney also made it a point opposite of what Coach Elliott was saying. You don't have to be a coordinator to be a great coach. Devin Sweeney's a good example of that. A great well, head coach anyway. Yeah, two things here. First of all, and, and Tony told you this, he wants to be a head coach. And he wants, but he wants it to make sure it's the perfect opportunity because Clemson is his school. And it's given him everything, so he wants to make sure it's perfect as Rencher carries, or I'm sorry, make that Moffa inside the the 10-yard uh, line. But also, I, you know, I wonder about Jeff Scott right now. He just completed a 2-10 and ten season. It's, it's been tough sledding down there in Tampa for the former co-offensive coordinator. And I'm sure he wanted to be a head coach. We saw what happened to Chad Morris coming out of here as a yeah. head coach. You, you want to take the right opportunity. And I think that's what Brent Venables and, and Tony Elliott are both trying to express. Mop on third and four. He gets down to the six, maybe the seven. It's Jordan Birch makes another tackle. Tigers finishing with nine wins. So Wake will play Pitt in the ACC championship game next Saturday night. Just as everyone predicted, right? <laughs> I mean, Pitt had the year that I think most thought North Carolina was going to have. Right, what happened to the Heels? Well, they blew it the other night. Nine point, up nine, what, two minutes to play. Of course, that was somewhat crushing, although it would have taken a weight loss to BC. That was unlikely. Boston College for Clemson to stay alive in the championship race. Interesting year in the ACC, to say the least. Tonight, take a look at tonight's State Farm. Great performance. Will Shipley goes over 100 yards for the third time this season. Again, it's been 15 years since a true freshman had at least three 100 plus yard rushing games. And that was CJ Spiller, who's now the running back's coach for Will Shipley. It's a pretty sporty company to be in, right? We talked about a little bit earlier. The pace at which he's been able to put up touchdowns this year as a runner. Still kind of rounding into form. Had a drop in the receiving game earlier in the game. That's something that he'll grow into that role. He'll get more looks, more comfortable in the offense, especially in the passing phase. A lot more to being a running back than just being a ball carrier. He's certainly got the skill set to impact this offense and a variety of ways. Winston can get a first down inside the four. On fourth and three, Mappa gets a touchdown instead. How about that play? He has set it up like it was going to be turn protection and a sprint out. And instead, it ends up being a delayed draw. It's an interesting play design. Kept it on the ground. Moffa gets to finish the drive off. Watch the offensive line. The turn protection. They just turn to the right. Like it's going to be a sprint out. Instead, you get a handoff right downhill. In the end zone again on the Tigers. 30 to nothing Tigers with two and a half minutes to go. Tuesday night, freshman phenom Kennedy Chandler and number 15 Tennessee will host Presbyterian. It's right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap, 7 p.m. The Blue Hose and the Volunteers. Yeah, there's a chance maybe that the Tigers might meet the Volunteers in the Gator Bowl. That'd be a to see, matchup, huh? To see what uh, Mark Schleyball's latest projections are. That would be, yeah, that's a lot of orange in one stadium.
Golly, that's trying to think about that. Well, there's going to be plenty of arguments as to which hue of orange is uh, more appealing. Years ago, Alabama played at, at Oklahoma, and all the Alabama fans wore white <laughs> to try to, to stand out against all the other crimson. <laughs> Speaking of the Oklahoma crimson, they're up 33-24 on Oklahoma State over on ABC in the fourth quarter. If the Sooners win that game, you know, that could give Notre Dame a clear path to the playoff. Although I do, I wonder if this guy who used to coach at Oklahoma, I wonder if his former team, the Sooners, still have any chance. They'd be 11 and one on the season and then would play the Cowboys again next week in the Big 12 championship game. You have to wonder then, you know, at that point, they talk about that 13th data point. What is that? It is that the trump card for a team like Notre Dame, who's really, what's their big win over Wisconsin at this point? It's intended for Nick Muse. Championship Saturday. It's going to be a lot of fun next week. Personal foul, illegal hand to the face, defense, number 14, 15-yard penalty, first down. It's Kevin Swint. Shot to the face on, on Nolan. The championship Saturday, we mentioned Wake's playing Pitt. Alabama's playing Georgia. You have two top four teams in that game. And I don't know that anybody thought this maybe when the season started, but Georgia is a I mean, going into the game, I don't know what Vegas will say, but I think anybody that watches college football would say that they are a convincing favorite. Yeah, uh, I mean, at this point, especially based on what we saw today with the injuries that the Crimson Tide endured, you'd have to think that they're multiple possession favorite in that game. No one slings it down there past Van. Incredible what Kirby Smart has done this season. Going undefeated 12 0, best record since 1982. 10 wins by 24 points. Yes. Yeah, they, they haven't been in, in a close game all year. I keep saying I wonder about Stetson Bennett in a close game. <laughs> you know, you may but not ever one, right? right? Yeah. I mean, we, we thought that for a little bit with you know, this Ohio State offense, you know, the way they're clicking. And maybe they could have given up some static. Well, there's they're out of the picture. That's not going to happen. There's only one team that's given them a game this year, and they're on defense right now. They've had a shutout tonight against the Tigers, and there's a catch made by Joyner in the Clemson territory. It's a great point. They're far and away the best game of the season. But even then, you know, you're talking about a team that scored three points the entire game, right? It's the defense of Georgia right now in an offensive age. College football's about points, and you just don't score any of them versus that Georgia defense. 10 games at 24 points. That's a that's a number. It's crazy stuff. Both of these teams played the dogs this year. Shane Beamer looked bewildered after that one. He certainly will be after this one too. This is gonna be a tough pill to swallow tonight with the way that this offense has looked. Because there was a lot of, of promise coming into this game with the way they beat the Gators, the way they played against Missouri, the way that they fought for 60 minutes and found a way to beat Auburn. Haven't seen any of that tonight. The, an opposite the struggles of Clemson, right? I mean, Clemson just now really starting to find their footing offensively. Best game by far on offense last week versus Wake, probably since the Boston College game. Quandre White goes inside inside the 40-yard line with under 90 ticks left. They will get a bowl game, though. This will not be it. Get one more try. Here's White. Is tackled by Jake Venables to force the fourth down. Good to see Jake get in there and get to do something. And lots been made of... Jake mentioning that he's going to transfer and play his last one more year of eligibility as a graduate player somewhere else, but he's very proud of the Clemson degree where football he's played for his father on fourth and two. Looks like White has enough to move the chains to the 37-yard line. 
You see South Carolina, you know what they're playing for? They want to get on the scoreboard. They want to find a way. Dabo's already got, he got the bat. Give him a chance to dry off for the midfield handshake. State championship. Down the field to the 15, and it's Muse who makes the catch. With 19 seconds left. We just popped the show the last time they got shut out. Number 18th of 89, and KJ Henry. And boy, boy, they got it. Now oh. those son in there getting in on the action, dumping the gator on his old man. Nolan throws it at Joyner's feet with five seconds to go. Well, I know Tiger fans would love to see their team get off the field without allowing a point to the Gamecocks for the first time since 1989. And meanwhile, the Gamecocks want to have something to put on the scoreboard with five seconds to go. Except Nolan in there, quarterback here at the end of the game, and you wonder, with bowl eligibility, what will that mean for the quarterback position going forward? Looking for one more play. Nolan gets out of there. He's going to take off, and he's going to fall three yards short. Jeremiah Trotter prevents the touchdown, and for the 21st time in school history, Clemson has shut out South Carolina. What a dominant performance by the 23rd ranked Tigers against their arch rival, knocking off Shane Beamer 30 to nothing. Gamecocks will finish six and six. Dabo Sweeney's team wins the state championship for the seventh straight time, and he's with Alyssa. Coach, you talk about the amount of adversity this team has faced all season. What does it mean to come into Columbia and beat your in-state rival? Well, I mean, it's a hard thing to do. These guys have have been a great second half team. They've outscored everybody in the fourth quarter, I think, all year. So to be able to, to, to keep them from out, I mean, all the way down to the last play, you know, see our guys fight, love how we ran the football. And uh, it was a great team effort tonight, all three phases, special teams, offense, defense. But, you know, I'm just proud of our team and how we finish. You know, again, rough September, uh, undefeated in November, whatever that is, seven out of eight to finish up, five in a row. And uh, man, we've got 18 guys out. Uh, but these guys are we're playing our best football right now. And you know what? That's what good teams do. They get better. They respond. And our team has responded all year. I'm proud of our staff. Happy for our fans. Uh, this is an important game to everyone. So it's good to be state champs. And, and uh, you know what? Hey, Shane's doing an awesome job down here. He really, he really has. And uh, they're, they're doing a great job. And I have no doubt they're going to get better and better. Thanks, Coach. Congrats. Thank you. What a performance by Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers tonight. He's the first ever coach to win seven in a row in this series. For Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang and our entire crew, I'm Taylor Zars. They're signing off from williams Bryce Stadium where the Tigers beat the Gamecocks 30 to nothing. Dari, Noka, and friends have all your scores and highlights in the studio next.